Hey, this is Jesus Castillo from rubyguides.com and in this video I want to talk about symbols. What are symbols? Well, let, let me show you. This is a symbol. Why is this a symbol? Well, it has some name and it has this colon in front of the name. So that's what we call a symbol. Does symbols have anything to do with variables? No, not really. Symbols have nothing to do with variables because symbols are just values. Like one, two, three numbers are values. Or strings, ABC, or arrays. All of these are objects, but they represent some kind of value. So it has nothing to do with variables. Variables hold the values, point to the values, give name to the values. But it's a value in itself. So I hope that's clear enough. So then what are symbols? Where symbols are more closer than strings, than anything else. But the difference is that symbols are fixed. They don't change. And when you have multiple symbols, so if you have title, title, this title and this title, they are the same thing. So they represent the same object. But if I have two strings, ABC and ABC, this ABC, these two ABCs are different. It might not look like they are different because they have the same data, but they are different objects. So that's the main difference. And the other difference is more of a semantic thing or how you use it how you use these symbols. So you use symbols when you need some kind of identification or some value to represent something. For example, when you use the attribute reader inside a class to define attribute reader so you can read your instance variables, you, we use a symbol for that. So you will do attribute reader and you will do symbol title. And this symbol title represents the add, oops, not that, the add title, title, fake, there, the add title instance variables, instance variable. There are also methods that return symbols, and you can also use symbols as hash keys. In fact, that's a very common use. Let me show you. So we can create A1, B2, C3. This is a hash, and these are symbols. ABC are the keys. So remember, a hash has keys and values. Keys, value, and the keys are symbols. Just notice one little thing. The colon is reverse, and this is just a special thing for hashes. So don't get confused with that. This is still a symbol, even though the colon is in reverse order. And you can access, to access it, then you use the, the regular symbol. So if you want to access the number one with this key, you don't put it like that, you put it like that. So that's an, a very common use for symbols. And that's good because, like I mentioned, if we have multiple symbols that represent the same value, then it will be the same object, meaning it will not take additional memory for you to store this object. So what else do we need to know about symbols? Well, for example, another thing that may come, that may be useful is to create an array of symbols. And the way to do that is like this. You do symbols equals percent i, then this parentheses, and then your symbol names. In this case, I'm using ABC, 
and then you get back this array of symbols, as you can see. And the equivalent for this in strings, which I think is useful to know, is instead of I, you use W, like this. So now we get ABC as strings. So that's just a shortcut way, so you don't have to actually type the columns for the symbols or the quotes for strings. Another thing that you might want to do is to convert between a string and symbol. So like I mentioned before, some methods return symbols as the output of that method. And one example will be the instance method method. So for example, string instance method. As you can see, we have a list of symbols. These are symbols. And these symbols represent method names, method names. And if we wanted to work with these symbols, for example, this next, we want to find, let's say that we want to find all of the methods in the list that end with uh, the bank, for example, or end with a question mark. Well, the thing with symbols is that you can do that, but if you want, for example, to use the end with method, I don't believe that we work. No, it doesn't because that's a string method. So if you want to use that method, you need to convert this symbol into a string. So to do that, we take the symbol, then we call 2s, 2s, and what this does, it takes the symbol and it creates an array, uh, sorry, it creates a string. And now we can use string methods because remember that the methods that you can use depend on the class, on the kind of objects you are using, so the class of that object. So now, since we convert them from symbol to string, that means that we can use string methods. So now we can use this method. And you can see that we get true. And now if we want to do what I mentioned before, we can go over this list and use the select method. And then we can say, well, before that, I'm going to map and then convert everything into strings. And then we can say if this string or this method ends with that, Bam, that's our list of methods that end with a question mark. So that's why this method is useful to S because many methods are defined on a string that are not variable, sorry, that are not available, that are not, that, is, that are not defined in symbol. And also, if you want to compare a string and a symbol that will not work, so you can see here, get false. So both need to be the same. So both need to be symbols or both need to be strings. And on that note, if you want to convert a string to a symbol, which is the other, the other way. So this is from symbol to string. Well, string to symbol is like this. ABC to sim for to symbol. This will be easy to remember. And what that does is take your string, gives you a symbol, very simple. And that can also be useful in some cases when you are 
constructing or building your symbol um, from a string. So if you're doing something like, I don't know, ABC, ABC, you will need to put this into parentheses. This builds your symbol more dynamically, we could say, in a more dynamic way. So yeah, that's symbols. Remember that you will use them when you want something that represents a value, it represents like this title, represents the instance variable, or these symbols represent the method names. But if you want to actually work with the data, like you want to do something like this and with or gsop method like gsop like this gsop b for um t that method it's only available if you have a string if i try to do this in a symbol we get undefined method. Why? Because gsop is not a symbol method. So that's the difference. If you have any questions, you can post them in the comments. I will be happy to answer them for you. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel now so you can receive more videos like this or help me grow the channel. Thanks a lot for watching. I appreciate it. See you in another video.